Raking the Rocks by Phil Cisneros. I have shared the story of raking the rocks with thousands of people of all ages across the country. They seem to enjoy it and even learn something from it. I'm glad. It's exciting to write about my personal life, knowing that thousands of people will gain from it. I'd like to point out that my mother and father did the best they could to love us and raise us to be productive, contributive human beings. Although raking the rocks seems like a rough chore for some kids, my father knew that giving me tools for my future was much more important than letting me have it easy. For this, I am very grateful to my father. He continues to be committed to the future for all of his children. My mother is a heart of our family and gives us the ability to feel, a gift I've been able to use in my writing. Her determination to be fully self-expressed in matters of the heart with her laughter, compassion, and tears showed us what it meant to express humanity. As you read this story, I ask that you think about your own family and how much they contribute to you. You may even want to write your own stories about what you learn as you grow up. Sometimes it's not until later we learn why our parents were the way they were or why they said certain things. I guess we finally start experiencing real life away from the safe harbor of home. I can remember so many times saying to myself as an adult, so this is what they were trying to tell me about. Or, oh, now I see what dad or mom was trying to say. That's why parents have us do those chores that seem boring or useless to kids. A family, no matter what size or form, is our first classroom for life. My family is where I learned to love and be loved, even when it was difficult. This book is a celebration of learning to love. It is a sharing of my own lessons learned and the foundation my parents gave me for my future. You may never have to rake the rocks in the desert like I did, but in life, we will always have rocks to rake. May you always bring out the brilliance of those rocks and may your life sparkle with good fortune. Raking the Rocks by Phil Cisneros The radio played the guitar solo song Apache as I got dressed. It was Saturday, chore day. After a bowl of cereal, I knew what was coming and I wasn't looking forward to it either. It was 1961, the summer between fourth and fifth grades. John F. Kennedy was president, and my dad, who was in the Marines, was stationed in Japan for a year. My mom, three sisters, myself, and my baby brother lived near my grandmother in San Gabriel, California, just outside of Los Angeles, until my dad got back from his tour of duty. I was given the title of man of the house while he was away. Along with that title came some responsibilities like mowing the lawn. This chore was done on Saturday mornings. I hated it. There were no power mowers available at that time for just us common lawn mowers. I had the standard rusty squeaky push mower. This one had a wooden handle that pinched the skin between my thumb and forefinger. The blades on it were so dull that when I tried to cut the grass, the grass looked like it had a bad hair day afterwards. It would always take me about two or three tries to make sure the grass was cut evenly. There weren't any weed eaters like we have today. Weeds that grew up along the fence or under bushes had to be cut with clippers, a large scissor-like tool that gave me muscle cramps in my hand and blisters between my thumb and finger. Not only that, I had to be on my hands and knees for long periods of time. Mowing the lawn was not fun. This certainly wasn't a chore for a 10 year old. On Saturday mornings, why I'd rather be with my friends, playing football with them in the city park or doing other things with them, playing baseball, rather than having my muscles ache from pushing that old lawnmower over and over again. However, since it was my chore as man of the house, I did it anyways. That summer, my dad returned from his tour of duty in Japan. Was I glad to see him. This man of the house job was more than one man can handle. After a couple days, my dad gathered the family together in the living room and announced 
where we were going to be transferred to. One would think he was talking to a platoon of Marines as he looked us over. The Marine Corps is transferring us to a new location, he announced. Barstow, California. Well, we all cheered like the good loyal troops that we were. Then one of my sisters raised her hand and asked, Dad, where is Barstow? We kids had no idea where Barstow was, much less ever hearing of it. Good question, my dad replied. Barstow is about two hours east of here, right smack in the middle of the Mojave Desert. You're going to love it. The movers are coming tomorrow at 0800 hours. Let's get moving and square this house away. Then came the words from my dad that we knew meant a lot of hard work that was about to come our way. And remember, a good Marine never leaves a dirty beach. Let's move out. My dad may have given us the platoon leader's call to duty, but it was my mom who was a commanding general in the home. She sat next to my dad as if she were silently giving him orders to give to us. After that, she took command of what needed to be done. This solid partnership let us know that they meant business and that they were counting on us. We all worked as a team to clean, pack, and move to our new destination, Barstow. Leaving San Gabriel, we said goodbye to our grandmother, aunts, uncles, cousins, and friends as we piled into our packed Ford sedan and headed east towards Barstow. As we got closer to Barstow, the scenery changed from a suburban city to small desert towns with nothing but sand, rocks, sage, cactus, and Joshua trees. The temperature went up as we entered a desert climate. With all the windows rolled down, there seemed to be no relief from the hot desert air. I looked out the window for some sign of relief, like some lake or river to cool us off. Nothing but sand and rocks. Coming into Barstow, I wondered how people kept cool in the summer, especially if they had to mow the lawn. Suddenly, as I looked at the houses that we passed along the highway, I noticed something that would later change my life forever. The yards had no lawns. Of course, I thought to myself, it was too hot and dry here to grow grass. I almost wanted to scream out, yes, thank you, Marine Corps. I love Barstow already. The thought of never having to mow the lawn again felt so great. Here was a place where Saturdays and the weekends tending to the yard were no more. I was free from the burden of chores. As we pulled up to our home on the Marine Base, I was even more excited at the sight of rocks, sand, sage, and cactus in all the yards of the base housing. That old lawnmower just became history as far as I was concerned. When the car came to a full stop, I practically jumped out of the car and felt like kissing the ground. My dad pulled out the house keys as we followed behind him anxious to see the inside of our new home. Filing inside, we were assigned to our new rooms. Then came the moment I had been waiting for since my great discovery about Barstow, the assigning of chores. We gathered in a large empty living room that echoed with our every footstep as we shuffled into rank. My dad began the family ritual of assigning chores, something that took place at every debarkation, including visiting friends, or going on a picnic. Marianne, my dad spoke to my older sister, you have the kitchen. Vivian, he said to my younger sister, your chore is the dining room and the living room. Adrian, he said to my youngest sister, your chore is the bathroom. And Phil? At this point, I figured out that with nothing but rocks for a yard, I was on vacation from chores until our next duty station. I was ready to be dismissed from the ranks of the chore soldiers. Phil, my dad repeated, you get to rake the rocks. I nearly laughed, thinking he was joking with me, but the serious look on his face suddenly brought me out of my fantasy of a choreless childhood. T -t Begging your pardon, sir, did you say rake the rocks? I asked for certainty. That's affirmative, son. He snapped back in his marine tone. Dumbfounded, 
I could only ask what seemed to be a silly question. Uh, sir, what do I rake the rocks with? With a steel rake, of course. Any rock that doesn't go through the teeth of the rake, he spoke as he demonstrated with his fingers poised like a steel rake. You put in your red wagon and haul them straight away to the desert straight across the street. Rake the rocks, I thought to myself. He must be crazy. Maybe something happened to him when he was in Japan. Maybe he bumped his head. Who ever heard of raking the rocks? I bet the kids who live here don't have to rake rocks in their yard. Well, then it occurred to me that they didn't have my dad for a father either. My dad is a kind of dad that knows for sure that his son or daughter is the best thing that ever happened to this world, and he was always ready to give us the best training for that role. Not long after that, the moving van pulled up with all our possessions. The steel rake was found immediately, of course. I began my newly assigned chore awkwardly, wondering what I must look like to the other kids in the neighborhood. My dad came out of the house as I started. I knew that look on his face all too well. It has that, here son, let me show you the way this is done, written all over it. With his hands on his hips and his wrinkled eyebrows, I felt like I was in that movie Bridge Over the River Kwai. Me, the prisoner of war, building a bridge, and my dad, the commander of the prison camp. Just as I predicted, he stepped forward to where I was raking the rocks in a circular pile and spoke those famous words only dad seemed to know. Here, son, let me show you the way this is done. Thank goodness he knew the method because I was certainly unfamiliar with the principles of raking desert rocks. He took the rake from my hands and proceeded to work it into the myriad of rocks that lay on the hot desert ground. Already I was thinking of a break as sweat trickled off the side of my face. I felt like I was standing in a sea of rocks as I watched my dad begin his demonstration of the art of rock raking. I want you to rake in straight lines down the yard, then another row right next to that one. And keep going until you finish the whole yard. Is that understood? He asked. Yes, sir, I said, taking a deep sigh. Now I knew I had to do it right because since there was a standard, there definitely would be an inspection eventually, and I would either pass or fail. At this point, I missed mowing the lawn more than ever. I could almost smell the fresh cut grass in the breeze. The rake made clinking noises each time I gathered the rocks as I sorted the ones that didn't fit through the teeth of the rake. It seemed like eternity as I began down the side of the yard along the sidewalk that led to the front door and worked my way towards the street. This was a rude introduction to desert living, I thought to myself as I piled the large rocks into my red radio flyer wagon. My mom came out with a huge glass of lemonade. She had that prideful look in her eyes as she watched me pull the wagon toward her. My mom knew that all of her children were diamonds in the making. Her favorite line for us when things didn't go right for one of us is, the world just isn't ready for you yet. You just wait and see. The world will catch up with you. No matter what, she was a rock of encouragement. Here, honey, have something to drink, she said. You'll need to replenish the liquids in your body or you'll have a heat stroke. Well, we hadn't been in a desert for more than a day and my mom was already an expert on desert living. It was as if she had survived a trek through the Sahara Desert and lived to tell about it. What felt comforting was that it came from her heart. Is there anything else you need, she asked. Well, Mom, I do miss my radio. Do you think you could find it in one of the boxes and put it in the window, I requested, knowing she would do it. Sure, she answered. Oh, and Mom, I shouted towards her as she turned towards the house, please put it on a rock and roll station. Okay, she called back. Moments later, a disc jockey was announcing the next song. It was Return to Sender by Elvis. And that soon became my working song as I made my way down the yard. Well, I figured that if I got one little area looking good, I'd eventually get the rest of the yard, someday. I worked on these rocks for weeks. 
I was just about finished one day when I stopped to take a rest. I looked up and I felt a sense of pride well up in me as I gazed over a yard full of neat and orderly rocks. It then occurred to me that the rocks in our yard were much neater and much more uniform than the neighbor's rocks. You could certainly tell the difference between our set of rocks and the neighbor's set of rocks, since there were no fences between the yards on base housing to separate the yards. I was basking in my accomplishment when I saw my dad pulling into the driveway coming home from work. I walked over to the car with my steel rake in hand, then stood at attention. For your inspection, sir, I spoke gallantly with my rake by my side as if it were my rifle. My dad got out of the car. He put on his cover. That's military for hat. As if you were about to inspect a whole battalion of Marines. He walked over the yard, checking out every corner. I stood there waiting for his verdict of pass or no pass. He walked back towards me. You know, it's a funny thing when you're a kid and you have learned to read the looks on your parents' faces. Sometimes, just by the look on their face, you know not to ask them certain things. Call it survival or just being smart enough. You learn about those looks that come without words. Son, he spoke loudly while I waited in anticipation, wondering what he was going to say by the look on his face. It looks sharp, very sharp, a job well done. I started breathing again. Now that the rocks were raked, I thought, what else was there to do with them? The thought of not having to do this anymore seemed like a good idea to me. I mean, after all, I passed inspection. Son, my dad spoke again, you'll continue to rake the rocks for your chore. Yes, sir, I replied. Piece of cake, I thought to myself. I got this chore down good. I mean, if I really got good at it, I could finish it in 20 minutes. And when I'm done, I could sit on the porch sipping my lemonade while my sisters worked away in the house finishing their chores. I could almost picture them peering out the window with envy as I cooled off in the shade. My thoughts were suddenly interrupted with an announcement from my dad. I want you to carry on raking these rocks in the same manner that you've been doing and tomorrow, when you finished raking them, I want you to water them, he ordered. My brain seemed to scramble to make sense out of what he had just said. Begging your pardon, sir, I said. Did you say, water the rocks? That's affirmative, son, he replied, as if we were going into battle. But, but Dad, rocks don't need watering. They won't grow, I said, still in disbelief. That's correct, son. But I want the shiniest rocks in the whole neighborhood. I want those rocks sparkling when I come home. Is that clear, son? He said with command. It's clear, sir. I replied with confusion about the necessity of having the shiniest rocks in the neighborhood. Who cared? Now I knew my dad had really flipped his lid. Why couldn't I have a normal dad who takes you fishing or plays baseball with you? No, I end up having a dad who makes you rake the rocks and then he makes you water them. My dad walked towards the house. I could hear my sister scramble, getting ready for him to walk into a clean house. The chain of command changed, though, once he entered the front door. He was now under the command of my mom. This was the only general he would ever salute with a tender kiss and call sweetheart. The next day I set out to rake the rocks with my new assignment, watering them after raking them. When I finished raking, I pulled out the hose and began spraying the dusty rocks with water. Once again, the thought of watering rocks seemed so ridiculous. I wondered what the kids in the neighborhood were thinking as they saw me, the new kid on the block, raking and watering the rocks. Then something strange began to happen as I watered more rocks. All of a sudden, I could see red rocks, green rocks, lava rocks, granite and quartz rocks. As I washed off the dust of the rocks, their true colors began to show up like a rainbow of jewels. I turned my head sideways to look at them from a different angle when I suddenly noticed the sunlight was sparkling off the wet rocks. 
I looked across the neighbor's set of rocks. Now I could really see the difference between our yard of rocks and the neighbor's yard of rocks. Our rocks were neat and sparkling in the sunlight. At that moment, my dad's order to rake the rocks seemed reasonable. I felt once again a sense of pride and accomplishment as if I had climbed a mountain and reached the summit. Maybe there was something to this raking the rocks and watering them. I continued watering the rest of the yard, watching for the colors of each rock to come alive as I washed the dust off them. Suddenly, watering the rocks had my whole attention. I made sure every rock was wet just so I could see it in the sunlight with its true colors. The thought of raking and watering the rocks as a silly chore disappeared in the background as I confidently pulled the hose to the other side of the house to water more rocks. The song Sugar Shack blared from the radio as I stood in the desert sun watering rocks to my heart's delight. Our tour in Barstow lasted for three years. That yard probably never got so much water. It probably never would again after we left. What stayed with me for the rest of my life was that what my dad taught me. You know, he could have let me off easy since there was no grass to mow. But knowing him, he could have shipped in sod grass and I could have continued the chore of mowing the lawn. He wasn't interested in becoming the most popular dad. He was much more interested in being a dad who got us kids ready for our future. With my mom in full partnership with my dad, even though it looked like to us kids chores weren't fair, the chores they assigned us were the foundation for our future lives. Later as I grew older, I figured that from raking and watering the rocks, my dad gave me three important tools, self-discipline, being able to create something from nothing, and having pride in my work. I love my dad not only for being my father, but for what he gave to me. I often wondered how he kept a straight face when he said to me, and tomorrow, I want you to water them. As an adult, I do have my responsibilities and commitments that come with the territory. Some days, it's like the moment when I was told to get the rake and rake the rocks. Then other days, it's like when I saw the brilliance of the rocks glistening in the sun in all their magnificent colors. In life, there will always be rocks to rake. Yet with self-discipline, creativity, and having pride in ourselves and our work, we can have those rocks shining brilliantly. Epilogue. After many years, the impact of raking the rocks is still with me. Writing stories is like raking the rocks. After the first draft, I pull out the words and sentences that don't fit in the flow of the story. Then I use the words that shine brilliantly, making the story the shiniest in the whole neighborhood. As for my family, my dad is retired from the Marine Corps after a 43-year career. My mom writes a weekly cooking column in their town newspaper. They live in a small desert town right next to Joshua Tree National Park in California. There are plenty of rocks to rake in their yard. My oldest sister, Marianne, is a loan officer for a major lending firm. My younger sister, Vivian, has her master's degree and is an audiologist. Both are marine wives and have children of their own. My youngest sister, Adrian is a homemaker with two children and is married to a computer software engineer. Robert, my brother, is a zookeeper for the San Diego Zoo. He lives in San Diego with his wife. Now I still write children's books. I also do a lot of business consulting and seminars and workshops 
I play guitar and sing occasionally, and I'm still an avid photographer. And I live in one of the most beautiful places in the world, San Luis Obispo, California. As you can see, having the kind of mom and dad that my parents were, we are all doing well. Having a father in the Marine Corps was like being in the Marine Corps. There were Saturday mornings when we awoke to the Marine Corps hymn playing loudly from the record player at 6 a.m., announcing the beginning for field day or chore day. Still, after all these years and accomplishments, I learned to use those tools of self-discipline, attention to detail, and commitment to a mission. My mother's assertiveness, heart, and creativity have been gifts to this writer that enabled me to paint pictures with my words. As I said in the beginning, my parents did the best they could to raise us. There are no perfect parents in the world, only parents who are learning what it means to love. Sometimes they are good at it, and sometimes they are challenged with decisions about what is best for their children. After years of finding my own way through this world, I learned that they will always be with me along with everything we experience together. Now I examine those experiences, put aside those that are useless, keep the ones that are useful, sprinkle them with love, understanding, and have them shine brilliantly.